Okay, I'm live here. Too soon. That <laughs> three minutes more. Doesn't matter. Main time. I'm gonna prepare the other tools. Hmm. Hello. Three more minutes, two more minutes. I was a little bit too soon. So stay tuned, have a tea. Bye. Uh, take something to eat, an apple or whatever. I will be right there. I'm just getting finishing ready. Mmm, that's gonna make a noise. I hope not. See you in a minute. One minute. Alrighty. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, from nine. Yes, one minute more. <laughs> Great, Goran. Nice to see you. Okay, let's see. And? Awesome. I don't know which one will take the sound from my. Headphones, I hope both. Yes, let's go live. All right, go live on Instagram. All right, let's see how it's gonna look today. I hope better than last week. Awesome! <gasps> I can't believe it. I managed to connect everything. A part of Instagram. Hello. Yes, Instagram is there. Hello, everybody. I'm waiting for you to connect. And today's topic is training and nutrition because. Many people ask me to repeat my nutrition lecture. So, yes. So we're gonna do it again today because I think that training and nutrition goes together. I'm gonna wait you to connect and give you a few more minutes, like half a minute more, maybe. One minute more. I hope you're doing great. Welcome everybody. I hope you are like starting to get used to this new situation and finding your way of uh, of being kind of sustainable and find yourself in it and that you don't suffer so much like the previous weeks. I'm adapting the thing waiting to you connect so i'm gonna start with exercise today so um 
Yeah, we fly paraglide where we need to talk about sport and exercising, right? We just fly around. Well, I believe that uh, to be to have more fun in life, flying and whatever we do, uh, you need to be fit. I mean, not so fit like uh, be able to run marathon or do ultra or whatever, but fit enough to feel comfortable with your body and not to die because you need to go uh, up a few meters on spike bottom uh, to the takeoff or you want to survive this hike on Grente if you want to fly this big flight, right? The same in uh, paragliding competition flying. There are many takeoffs. We are finding ourselves that you need to walk to take off, even if they bring your glider. And you want to be able to fly after that. A part of that, um, when you fly, it requires some endurance. I mean, big, big record flies are about like 10 hours, nine hours. Some task maybe they will do, it will last only four or five hours at the longest, but still, when you need to be focused for so long, it helps a lot if you are fit in your body. So that's why I wanted to speak with you about fitness. I would like to speak with you about fitness as well because. Um, I always knew that it's important. And every time I started to, to do some preparation, I injured myself. And I couldn't understand why am I injuring myself all the time. So I started to go on this uh, quest of understanding my body better and how to train better. Let's start with um, my experience, okay? So I, before I started to compete in paragliding, I was uh, training ice skating and I was training tennis and I usually have a co used to have a coach and physical preparation coach who would make a plan for me and decide for me what to do. Uh, most of us, when we join paragliding, uh, who has a coach? I mean, a part of French, who has a coach? Nobody has a coach. Nobody tells you uh, how to train the best, what kind of training is the best for you for paragliding and how to prepare the best. So I found myself from this space of having a coach uh, into a space of total liberty. And it was something that really what I've really liked. But on the other hand, I needed to, um, I, I went on a trial of tries and errors and, and successes, okay? And as I said before, I injured myself uh, most of the time as soon as I started to uh, try to do some uh, physical preparation. And by trying to understand why, is it so, why was it so, I went to do my first uh, blood test and do, like sport check, but proper sport check, not uh, just, you know, what at least we in Poland have. They do you uh, lying cardio uh, check and then eyes and hearing and general blood test and see you go home and now you have a sporting license. Now I went to the a sport uh, clinic and we did a proper uh, lactate, like of course the, the, the static test and then the lactate test included with the on uh, ergometer, so on the on the bike, stationary bike, with uh, all the hard uh, things connected to me, all these cables, and um, I found a very good clinic because this lady not only checked my lactate but she as well checked the functions of my muscles. Uh, the stability, uh, the balance, and the um, flexibility. And when sh second, when I've got the second uh, date, I've got like a big book 
uh, including the um, training advices uh, for, for endurance and as well training advices for my instabilities in the body and what should I do. And even with this book, I was already, I was like looking inside the, and, and now, and what I do with that, you know? Uh, even with informational guys, in that one was 60% of the week, I should be in zone uh, one, two, and then this much in this zone, and this much in that zone, and I couldn't understand what the zone is. She just gave me advice, okay, you need to buy a sport watch, just buy a basic sport watch, so you can monitor it somehow. And then on the, on the search, I got a book, uh, unfortunately, for those of you who speak German, it's a great news. For those who are not speaking German, uh, I will come to the next book uh, later, which you could use. I found the book Fit in 100 Days uh, by Heinrich Bergmüller, who was um, a physiologist of Hermann Mayer. And this guy brought Hermann Mayer after his huge motorbike accidents back on winning uh, World Cups in ski racing. So it was good enough for me just to read into it. And amazing, like this book is just for basic knowledge, one of the best I've seen. I advise you, I will not paraphrase um, what is inside the book. Uh, if I hope there is, okay, I will move. Somehow, thank you, uh, sound glider, whoever you are. I'm gonna move my, um, yep, hold on. Is it better like this? Or is it still super loud? I know my computer, my computer is MacBook actually, but when you put the phone next to the, okay. Okay, Sebastian, great. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on going like this. Just need to do small adaptation with the candles. Super selfie stick. Alrighty, I hope you have better now. Okay, perfect guys, thank you for helping me, that's amazing. I'm trying to do like three screens same time and I read all of you what you're writing. That's why if you have any questions, any comments, feel free to type. I'm gonna read them later and we'll come back to you with answers or I would love you actually to exchange your experience same time because everybody can read what you're writing and like this, you know, I'm not the guru here. <laughs> you uh, have your own opinion, your experience, and by exchanging your, your opinion and your experiences, we can uh, go much further. So I'm uh, excited to uh, hear from you as well. Uh, this is still my experience and um, I just would love to share it with you because I hope I can help you this way to bring you further uh, in your life and, and sport. So um, I mentioned the book Fit in 100 Days and there was an update on this book, which is um, a norm in form, uh, the same author, all, all in German. Uh, actually, I didn't found if there was a translation of this uh, books. But if you speak any German, uh, highly advisable. I, as always, I will put it um, below in the comment of the YouTube video and on my other sources and uh, channels as well. Um, so since I'm speaking about the books, if you want to read just one book, and or two books and have all the information inside what you need. Another great book is The Uphill Athlete. Um, it has a three 
Um, three authors, one of them is Killian Jurnet, and it should be good enough ready for you. Why Uphill Athlete, in my opinion, is a good book. Uh, because most of us, uh, first of all, what we need is endurance. And Uphill Athlete is a book for uh, uphill endurance athletes. Why uphill? Because most of us uh, is doing hike and fly. So we need to prepare our cardiovascular uh, system uh, for going up and uh, to sustain carrying up the, the heavy load of the, of the paraglider. Uh, some of you live in places where you need to hike for takeoff. Some of you like to hike uh, to fly. Uh, and this is the, the thing which you love the most. And why not to uh, make it more uh, conscious, the preparation, and more sustainable for you? Uh, so I highly advise you this uh, uphill athlete. And for female athletes, uh, extra book would be the Roar for Dr. Stay from Dr. Uh, Stacy Sims PhD, and um, she has. Um, physiology specialize on women physiology. She is more in uh, endurance sport like triathlon and like triathlon, so like really high endurance sport. But she have great advices in the book on how to train the best um, as a female athlete and how to understand your body better and how to make the best use out of your body. So. That said, uh, I'm going to put as well more links uh, below to nice podcasts which you could listen uh, from pro coaches uh, to get more knowledge and more understanding. But I will give you some uh, basic uh, input still from my experience. So... <clears throat> Uh, as I said, for, for flying long, in my opinion, uh, train some endurance, so some cardio is uh, advisable, but you need to uh, keep in mind your uh, training zones, and it is better to stay on the lower side than the higher. So for me, when I did my first sport check, it meant I just needed to go for a longer walk, and that's enough. Then you can start with like walk, run intervals, like jog, walk, jog intervals, and then slowly, slowly work yourself up. If you just go for a longer walk every day, what like Sebastian Kava is writing in his book, this is all he's doing, is already better than nothing. But if you want to be really fit, it's better to uh, have some plan about that, what you're doing. And there is a coming, like some of my friends in even, uh, they are doing sports. I mean, like they're riding bikes, they're hiking the mountains, they're running. But the question is, are you just doing sports or are you really training? What is the difference? You know, do you feel any difference? I mean, yeah, doing sport is already better than nothing as well. Okay, I will not read the comments because I'm going to get distracted. I'm going to read them later, okay? So um, if like doing sport is just, you know, no watch, no Strava, no uh, all these tools, just enjoy being outside and move, of course, better than nothing. But the consequence is, at least for me, that if I do sports with uh, my buddies who are so much more fit than me, that I'm always dead at the end, okay? So my, I'm going, I'm pushing too hard, much too hard. And actually I'm doing more damage to my body than, than, uh, than uh, good stuff. That's why I believe the best way, on, especially on the beginning, is really training. So have a plan and do it conscious and sustainable for your body uh, when it's about any type of training. So plan your weekly, weekly trainings, 
easy trainings, harder trainings, your intervals, your recovery time, which is super important. Sometimes you need to just give a rest to your body and, and you know, do some just foam rolling or stretching or uh, sauna or whatever. So don't forget about recovery. Uh, another stuff uh, which is important for, in my opinion, is the strength training, uh, because we have we are carrying these heavy bags. Sometimes we might have a harder landing. With strength training, we are making our bones stronger, uh, our ligaments stronger. But don't jump on it like straight on on the most hardcore training, like CrossFit training, because your ligaments and your bone system. If you didn't do sport all your life, it's not ready to carry all this intensity which you're giving your body. So my best advice is if you want to be good, start with mobility and stability exercises and then gradually start with body weighted exercises and then uh, move to some uh, weights, okay? Since we are speaking about the mobility and stability, it's very important to address like all body holistic. That's why um, I love to work out on different balance, but like uh, pillows and balls, and that my body is when I do any exercise is all the time in. Uh, in the motion but not in, in one position but in different positions because like this i'm more I, I feel i'm more ready for everyday life and the next thing is that when we fly we usually hold our hands like this so most of the pilots have the problems with shoulders uh me myself if i don't take care if i don't exercise and uh, stabilize my shoulders i would wake up um, in the morning with lightly dislocated shoulders just because my muscle pull, pull the shoulder out and, uh, and I can't move. So that's why if you, if you fly a lot, um, you should uh, do like equalization exercise and exercises and strengthening uh, the muscles uh, which you don't use when you fly and stretching the muscles uh, which you use intensively when you um, when you fly. So basically, my favorite exercise for that is um, V T Y. So basically, it's like pull, and then you go like from here. You go 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 here. Okay, and if you do it like 30 times with your shoulder brace always together, uh, then you get tired and you will see how much better your shoulders are. And this is just one move in which you can improve so much about your shoulders. You, you can do the same just lying on the, on the floor, then you have more resistance uh, because of the weight of your hands. And then you can move uh, on with the uh, weighted exercises. Okay. Um, just holding some handles or whatever, like some weight in your hand and just lying on the floor. The best is if you work with a physiotherapist uh, who works holistically on your body and uh, will equalize your instabilities and your uh, bad postures, you know. Uh, a lot of bad posture which we have comes from the our everyday life and our habits like sitting too much so we have shortened some muscles some muscles are not strong enough especially uh, you know in the legs uh, if you bike a lot the same is happening when you fly a lot like in the, in the pot harness uh, you have basically almost same muscle groups short as as a road biker, so if you find, like I found this program, which is uh, Dynamic Cyclist, and uh, I, I, I've put it in the, in the Instagram, the promo code for them, uh, because I found them last summer, and I started to do the stretches and mobility exercises 
which they have on the web page. It's super easy, super fun, 15 minutes. Uh, when you're warm, like warm up to the mobility exercise, move on to next stuff. And I've seen a huge progression in my uh, self being like, you know, I felt so much better. And I'm super happy that I can give you that code now. And you can test them for, for seven days for free. Um, okay. Uh, then this is like general training. So for sure, as I said, cardio endurance. And then first of all, stability, mobility, and then only strength. Uh, because if your muscles are not mobilized and your posture is not stable, stabilized, you go to strength, you're gonna just injure yourself, okay? And that's why I was injuring myself. I was pushing too hard too soon. And this is usually the case. Okay. And you want to have your training sustainable. So you don't want to be stressed because you're doing a trend like, oh shit, I need to do this training today. And oh, you know, no, you, you want to plan it well. You want to plan how much time you have to invest in the training and, and um, adapt accordingly your, uh, your training, your, your week plan. If you, if you have like super stressful day at work, really like doing a little bit of stress before you're going, uh, doing a little bit of training before you going back home, it will just make you better partner or better father, mother and uh, you know, you will not put all this bad emotions on your family. You will get your dose of endorphins before going back home and you will be so much happier person, okay? Uh, and still, if you feel tired and overwhelmed, then give yourself a day rest and then just adapt the rest of your training. But don't search excuses not to do a training. Uh, it can happen sometimes, you know. Um, from my experience, you know, I'm ski instructor, so I stay all day, every day, on the slope with my clients. I'm all the time moving, and it's cold, you know. <laughs> and then you're coming back home, you're hungry, you're cooking, and then you're getting warm and lazy. And you know what? I was just putting on my jogging shoes at 10 o'clock at the night because this is when I, like after two hours of self-talk and self-motivation, I finally was managing putting this training clothes on and I was going out to run at dark. And after, I don't know, 10 minutes, I was just so happy I did it. I was passing by this old upper ski places where people still in ski boots and ski clothes, drunk, in the smoked rooms, you know, and I was doing something for myself and it made me just feel so much better. Uh, so think about those things that motivate you and make you feel uh, better about the training because on the beginning, when you don't feel like training at all, and it will feel like this, when you start, you start slowly and it doesn't feel like a training. Uh, then think about all of these higher goals uh, you're doing it for, for your, like, you know, vigor and happiness later and uh, the better flying and just feeling good because you do something for yourself, you take the time for yourself, you know, something, find, it, find your own motivation. Think about this. What is motivating you? Uh, and I'd, I really recommend you to do this sport check, you know, with the lactate levels, uh, because like this, you can train so much smarter, um, because otherwise you might destroy your body instead making you something, making it something good. Okay. And very important for sure, as with flying, same with training, journal. Like write down your mood, like write down how did you feel after it, write down how did you feel next day. Because like this, 
you are able to observe you and adapt better your trainings to yourself, if, especially if you don't have a coach. If you will have a good coach uh, who follows you on uh, any uh, application which you can use for training, they will ask you to do that because they want to understand better what was going on. Like, did you have some extra stress? Did you eat something bad? Did you drink some alcohol before? Um, you know, did you have a sleepless night because your kid was, was crying or you couldn't fall asleep? And this is very important too. Uh, like, uh, months, ma a month ago, I started again with my endurance. As you know, I was um, injured for... Uh, for quite a long time and I've totally fall off my training and uh, I was trying to come back to my training last summer but you know it's easy excuse with travels and comps to fall out of the training but um, I'm still trying to figure out my sustainable way of combining uh, travels and comps and, and training and moving around and I'm getting better and better on that. But this winter, I just uh, switched to ski touring, uh, teaching skiing and ski touring, and I didn't do much of different type of endurance. And now with this lockdown, I went back on bike. And, you know, sometimes the day gets like, hey, you wake up, you do this, da, 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 da. Oh, I'm hungry. I eat. Okay, boom, boom, boom. And then, shit, it's evening and I still didn't train. And you go on the bike. And then I couldn't sleep, you know. And I'm saying to my friend, Charlie, hey, man, you know, it's horrible. I'm not sleeping. And he asked me, when do you train? Well, at evening. Well, maybe you should do it in the morning, you know. And you don't think about this, you know. Before, I used to run at evenings and <coughs> sleep like a baby. And now something changed. I'm older or whatever. And I can't sleep after cardio. I'm just like turning around in bed. So get planned well and move the training different time of the day and see if it's going to change. I move to the morning and early afternoon and I'm sleeping like a baby again, you know. Observe, adapt, change. Since, oh shoot, I move my planning and now we have my thing moving. All right, since we were speaking about the alcohol and it's, oh, sh sorry, Instagram, <laughs> I lost you under carpet. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Yeah, hi, I'm back. <laughs> okay, so I will not do the long lecture about eating like the previous one because I don't want to mention all my history of eating again. Um, that I want to point out that this is super important part. I would say, like, imagine you having um, a Bentley or a Porsche or any expensive sport car. And what kind of oil and fuel are you putting into it? The cheapest from the a budget gas station with the old polluted uh, tubes, or are you putting the best possible gas with the cleanest and you're changing the oil frequently and you're doing all my tanks works? I guess you would put the best stuff in. So why so many people are throwing trash into their body, which is the most precious engine out there? And that's why I think that thinking about what you're eating and really uh, con making conscious choices is okay. Um, so what I believe is the most important thing, one of like one thing you can do is just check your body type. And like this, you will know which food is making good for you and which food is totally no go for you. The other stuff, which is maybe more mm, easy or more difficult, depending how you are and when you are in your life, is just observe how you feel after eating certain foods. 
Um, for me, for example, I know if I don't eat golden or weak and then I will have and don't eat, don't drink any or eat any uh, diary thing. And then on Sunday, I will have a croissant with uh, cappuccino. I will swell, you know. And But you know what? I know. I will just do 12 hours break and then don't eat it all the week. My body will clean from this. And I just enjoy cappuccino with one croissant. And I think to have it one time a week, it's not so so drastic thing. But the same thing you can do with other products. Like if I eat meat, my digestive system stops for one week. That's why I don't eat meat. I don't, I feel clumpy. I feel like food coma. I feel like I just want to sleep. And now some of my friends told me like, you know, aborigines, if they eat, um animal proteins they actually were sleeping for two weeks because it's so hard hard digesting and even paul gusherbauer if you read his uh, interview for cross country magazine when he goes for exalps he's going vegan so why don't give it a try how are you going to feel not eating meat for 10 days how are you going to feel not putting any sugars like um, raffinate sugars in your body for 10 days. Um, how are you going to feel not eating a diary for 10 days, you know, and just observe your body and, and, and take notes. And even if you eat, like even if it's tasty, think about like try to feel how you feel like a few hours later. Like if you have a food coma, if you feel full of energy, uh, if you want to drink a lot, if you have some funky taste on your tongue, like uh, my tennis coach have this favorite Chinese restaurant or whatever Vietnamese uh, next to tennis place. And he's like, you should go and try it super healthy, only veggies and blah, blah, you know, and I try it. And I feel like there is full of chemicals inside, which I just should improve your taste. And I was like, dude, that's not good at all. There is like this packed with chemicals and I can taste it because normally I don't use it. And this is what is happening when you observe what you eat, like observe how you feel after eating and then maybe even try eliminate some products just for the test, especially with sugar and like overdose on salt, you will suddenly feel that Actually, everything what you can eat in restaurant uh, and like takeaways is full of sugar, full of salt, because they want you to drink more when you are in restaurant. They want you to not order one drink. They want you to order like three, four drinks, you know. And I don't need to tell you what sugar is doing to your body and overdose on salt. I think everybody is already aware about that. Um. The same author as the um, uh, as the fit in hundred days. This guy Bert Miller. I didn't read this book, but one of my students told me about this. Wrote a book about you are um, about the thirst and drinking, uh, and that when you, he say in this book that when you feel thirsty, this is when your body already took all the water from the organs. So you are not sick. This is what he said. You are not sick. You're just thirsty. And most of us is walking the world dehydrated. What this doctor say that you should think about drinking one glass of water an hour, not two liters of water on one gulp because this is making too big shock for your body and it's the body is not able to process it so you basically will just run straight to the loo no just slowly sip one glass of water an hour when i started to study in switzerland i was really shocked because all my colleague students were walking with these bottles you know, with water and with lime inside. And I was like, what's going on here? What is this fashion? 
And only years later, I understood I'm just not hydrating enough. And I still don't hydrate enough. And for me, tea is not hydration. It has caffeine inside, which is putting out the water out of your body. Juices is not hydration. It's plenty of sugar. You know, to process sugar, you need fiber. I was drinking like tons of juices and I was wondering why I'm so fat. Juice is not good. Beer is not hydration. No, guys, sorry, that doesn't count. This is extra. Think about drinking six to eight glasses, big glasses of water a day, slowly. So maybe start to carry these bottles with you and check that there is no B, B, H or whatever, no this bad plastic in the bottle. And that's like, if it tastes funky when you drink it, that's mean that maybe that's not good. Like there is some plastic in your water now. All right. So hydration and hydration is super important when you go to fly. So think about this, what like to have water actually uh, in your harness and sip water when you fly. I'm sipping like on every transition or sometimes if the thermal is mellow, I sip when I, when I thermal. And if you sip slowly, first of all, it's relaxing for you, as I said last week on the mental training uh, lecture. And second of all, uh, it just keeps your head clear, you know? Next thing is cleansings. That's a big topic. Um, now, fasting, intermediate fasting, and whatever, a lot of types of fasting. Um, I really believe if you are um, if you are new to fasting world, uh, and this is something what is really advisable to do at least once a year. But if you're new to fasting world and you don't eat very healthy, jump straight on water fasting or juice fasting or whatever this hardcore procedures will just make more harm to your body than good. If you are starting with this healthy way of eating, think about something more sustainable. So um, I advise to everybody to go and see this uh, book, Clean. Or clean that uh, by Dr. Alexander Hunyes. If you go back into my post uh, in Instagram, you will find uh, the name of the books and the author. Um, and he is having like 21 day uh, a fasting procedure where you eat. Like last time I did this uh, fasting with a friend of mine in his uh, collocation. All of the guys in the house were like, you're fasting, like looking to our plates. Are you really fasting? That looks really fancy what you're eating and really tasty. Doesn't look like suffering. No, it isn't suffering. It's just giving your body all the nutrients it needs, all right? And uh, just elim elim eliminating those who you doesn't serve you. So alcohol, sugar, dairy, gluten, and coffee. The friend of mine, he got huge head headaches for four days after stopping coffee because toxins are going into your brain as well. So if you want to fly good and focus and be sharp focus in your life, everyday life, think about this, to drink enough, to be clean of toxins in your, that what you're putting into your plate, that's what you're putting into your skin. If it say on the package, don't drink it, maybe you shouldn't touch it as well, you know, because that's gonna go into your skin. Um, and if you can't avoid it, like, you know, there are some products we can't avoid and at least clean your body from them and your body will be grateful, your skin will be shiny and your brain will work and you will see, you will not have those depressive uh, skins and no cravings. Like 
after my first cleansing, I started to sleep well and was sharp in my mind. And I stopped having cravings for sweets. This is not you having craving for sweets. This is the candida in your stomach or other bacteria which are on overgrow are shouting food, you know? Recent study, if you, if you go to like research on that a little bit, recent study say that a lot of our moods is steered basically by our intestine, intestine, intestines, our gut flora, and by that what we're eating. So if we can influence our moods with that what you, we're putting into our mind and the training and feel better, be more optimistic, be more energized and more happy in our lives, why not? And my best advice is whatever you do, whatever you eat, journal and you will see what influence you which way and maybe what to stop and what continue to do okay that's uh this um for for my talk today all right i will go back to the questions i've got some questions here on instagram i saw it so I need to scroll a little bit back. All right. I started with triathlon last year and this improved my endurance in 250k plus easy flights on well, two liners a lot. So I fully support your advice. Yeah, you see, like uh, I totally agree with you. Maybe you don't need to go as hardcore as triathlon, but definitely swimming is good for your back and um, your general uh, health uh, is relaxing and it's uh, calming down the system. Bike is good, because especially if you have an overweight, uh, starting with jogging, maybe it's not so good idea. It's quite heavy on joints and biking is uh, totally a better way to start on with uh, with some cardio training or treadmill, old treadmill, or like you know this this thing with the gym where you like swinging, or in winter like skating with skis because it's more full body workout. Workout. What I wanted to advise you as well is if you go for biking or running, make sure that you have a bike fitted to you. I mean that. Uh, your saddle is the correct white uh, whiteness for your coxit, like coxit and sitting bones and other bones you have down there, because otherwise you can harm, you know, especially guys can harm themselves more than uh, make good. And it will be so much more comfortable to, uh, to just be many hours on the bike uh, if your bike is fitted. Your there is a lot of bike shops right now who offer this type of services, which is um, bike fitting. They measure your saddle. They look that you push on the paddle the right way, uh, that you have the right position, that you have right distances. And that makes a huge difference. Maybe for the beginning, you don't need the most expensive bike, but definitely invest in fitting, okay? If you go running, uh get yourself a shoe which is uh, adapted for the surface you're running i see a lot of people in the city especially running on um this concrete uh, i don't know pa what pavement roads like sidewalks and this is so bad for your joints like if you can, like in Polamokotovsky where I live in Warsaw, we uh, have even um, a piece of grass where you can run. So if I have a choice, concrete, asphalt, earth, I'm choosing earth. If you have a choice, concrete, asphalt, I'm running on asphalt. It's much softer and better for your joints. And if you run basically on hard surface, make sure that your shoes are 
uh, absorbing uh, part of the shock which you are uh, having from this hard surface, okay? Uh, if you run more on the, in the forest, then it doesn't matter so much because the, the ground is, is okay, it's, it's soft. Just make sure that you don't kill yourself by sleeping, okay? And the rest doesn't really important, you know, like many people think I need to have the latest watch to be able to train, I need the best um, uh, gear to start to run. No, just to start to do some sport. You don't need the most fancy gear. Like half of my gear is, um, half of my gear is uh, from some cheap shops. Uh, and I still can use it, like, I don't know, Decathlon or, like, I invest, I invested from the beginning in good shoes, and that was the, the biggest investment I did, and the rest, uh, sport clothes or whatever, I was just going for budget. Because it doesn't matter really. And the same with the sport watch. You don't need the latest, more most expensive sport watch to go and train. If you don't have many people around you, you can go for the very basic that you just uh, see your heart rate and, and, and adapt your training to your heart rate. Mm. Okay. I'm waiting for the questions. Do you have any more like uh, input from your side? Would you like to share some of your experience? I'm gonna read it out loud. Uh, feel free now to ask. Okay. I wait. Few more minutes and then I'm gonna finish. Okay, good. So, as every week, I'm gonna. Uh, Post uh, the my advice books and most valuable podcasts um, under the post. Sorry for last week, I didn't post it. I'm gonna catch up on this uh, this week. I was just uh, all the time out <laughs> by riding my bike, and I enjoyed so much the good weather uh, that I just didn't got to that. So sorry for that. But uh, this week I'm gonna catch up on books about mental training and about this week I'm gonna put you some training and nutrition, like nutrition books you have already on my Instagram, but I'm gonna put you the training books. And there is a, a very good podcast by uh, Stacy Sims PhD about the, uh, hydration and history of hydration drinks. Uh, which I'm going to link uh, below because uh, she's so much smarter on that. Uh, I can tell you all what she said, but better you listen to her. And um, you can dig into that rabbit hole of Dr. Stacey Sims' uh, podcast. And for all the girls, she have an Instagram um, and Facebook fan page. Uh, where she speaks why women are not small men. And this is basically the topic of the book. And this is super important, especially for us ambitious girls to understand that most of the training programs are made for men uh, and they are made for um, young men <laughs> in certain, uh, a like certain age. So it doesn't work uh, always. That's why it's, good for us girls to read more about stuff uh, by women for women and i'm gonna put you some uh links to uh some good stuff for women and i'm gonna put you um some podcasts for 
uh, a good training advices, in my opinion, from my experience on researching or on that in past years. And yeah, thank you very much for being here with me today. And I hope you enjoyed and see you next week. I'm not sure yet about what I was. Uh, I will make my next week podcast. If you have any question and any um, any questions, any suggestions, feel free to type. Feel free to contact me on private or on on the um, on the comments below and I'm going to reply to your um, comments. I have already a list of questions I just from one of the, um, of the uh, followers and I'm going to go through it and I will pick some topic from there which I'm going to speak about. So have a super nice uh, end of the weekend, a beautiful week. And I hope you will all stay safe and healthy. And bye. Yeah, I was hanging here on, um, on Facebook. I'm going to stop the Instagram and then I will say on Facebook again. Alrighty. So I was saying that I wish you all a super nice weekend. Uh, end of the weekend and the week and I hope you all stay safe and healthy and see you next week. Bye! All right, ending the Instagram, uh, the YouTube. Nice to see you and see you next week. Bye-bye.